It is another edition of Hoops Adjacent on the Athletic NBA Show. David Aldrich here in D.C. in the Bay where apparently the apocalypse is happening. Marcus Thompson. <laughs> what's, what's up? Y'all got pestilence is, and man. flies and shit? <laughs> and we had snow uh, earlier, so snow. snow. Like people, yeah, like not like way up either. It was it was tangible. Damn, you, you, know, you was like foothills. You got some snow. <laughs> yeah, no, it was like actual snowfall. People were like passing a photo around. You know, this Cali, we don't get snow. So any little white, it could have been somebody on the roof, just you know, or <laughs> <Just> flower <laughs> detergent. Yeah, or some we, shit. yeah, it's it's wild out here. You know, it's, oh, it's so wild. Out here. Your it's up. raining like crazy. Oh my god! Oh my god! That's funny. We'll be all right. We'll be all right. You'll be. You'll survive somehow. The pouring rain. <laughs> I mean, I watch day after tomorrow, and they survive. So you know, <laughs> figure, for some pointers, you know what I'm saying? We oh get. my god! All right, all right. So we're joined this week by our buddy Rich Hoffman, who covers the Sixers so well for us at the Athletic. Rich, appreciate you, man. I know you got to travel this afternoon, so appreciate you jumping in. Happy to be on with you guys, man. Uh, it's uh, yeah, I do have to travel a little bit later, but uh, I'm going to Miami, so I, I'm I'm okay with yeah, that. Like, I'm hearing the Marcus's stories about the weather and stuff like so that. I'm, I'm in rainy oh, Philly right man. now, so we're gonna be all right. <laughs> how are you? How are you surviving, Rich? Like how are you? I mean, that's tough. Yeah. You gotta go to Miami. He's gonna man. have to somehow go to Prime One Twelve tonight and <laughs> camp out yeah, there. I'm at, I'm at, I might have to uh, give him thoughts and prayers, man. We right. might have to thoughts and prayers, Rich. Go to Joe Stone Crab and try to muzzle through. So he'll <laughs> somehow find a way to survive. It'll be okay. <laughs> so, man, speaking of surviving, let's let's talk about your sixes, man. I, I was on Bomani's show last week and I told him, and I still believe this, even though they've lost their last two. I still think the Sixers, whoever wins, it look, I mean, the way it's setting up right now, it looks like Milwaukee Philly second round, which would be like Titanic. And I feel like whoever wins that series, I have a feeling is going to be the team to get out of the East. I just feel like those two teams got a little something for Boston that maybe I know Boston just beat beat Philly the other night. So I'm not hating on Boston. I don't know. I could be wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I think Philly could beat Boston in seven games and so good Milwaukee for that matter. Well, I, I think it's, Interesting that you're kind of from out of Philly and have that take because nobody in Philly <laughs> has that take with Boston. Boston is like, they're the boogeyman, man. Right. They're just, they're, I mean, obviously they've been the best team this year and they have just. There's a little history there though, right? A little history. There's a, oh. there's a lot of history and a lot of, I think Boston being, the Celtics definitely being better history and recent history. They've just, I, I don't want to say the Sixers lose all the time to Boston, but the the Celtics have gotten the better of them in playoff series and things like that. Uh, I So the, the way I would say it is that a lot of people, it's, it's funny. You're different than most people. I don't think a lot of people believe in the Sixers team. I think it's locally and nationally, it's second round and out doom and gloom, like good team, but just not quite on the level of those teams. I think they have a chance. They have like, it better than a puncher's chance. I would say, is it like a 30% chance? I, I don't know what the exact number is, but yeah, if, if things go right against both of those teams, like Joel is healthy and doesn't have a freak injury in the playoffs, he goes crazy and is the best player for a couple of weeks. I think they have a chance to get past them. Um, but I wouldn't pick it, I guess is the way I would say it. Uh, but I also do think this is like the best Sixers team that I have covered at this point. You know, the other, yeah. the other, choice is the Jimmy Butler team from 2019 and that team was probably a little more talented this team does not have Jimmy Butler for sure Jimmy Butler again tormented them last night Jimmy Butler and Al Horford will torment them until they retire uh, I think that's just the way this is going to go but that team was thrown together in the middle of the season they didn't really know where to go they were on the same page they gave Toronto a good series but this team like actually knows what they're doing like Harden and Embiid or they have pretty good synergy together uh so I definitely think this is like a, a very good Sixers team I think they deserve to be in the title contender conversation I'd probably put them a little bit below Boston and Milwaukee though that's that's just me though who who would you say you know is their you know third best player who's who's the player if you got mm -hmm. if you got if you if you got a plan for Embiid and you got an extra wing somewhere who you can just say, all right, you got hard. Who's that third player you think that can win a game for you in the playoffs, probably on the road? 
well, I, I think it's it's clear, but that third player isn't always very consistent because he's in his third year in the NBA, and that's Tyrese Maxey, who, you know, we saw the other night against Boston. He just was not very good. That's a tough matchup for him. They switched. Derek White is like kind of his kryptonite. He's just big, and he just moves. He's, he's very good. Uh, but Tyrese Maxey, like in last year's playoffs, he had 38-point games against Toronto. He had some big moments against uh Miami, it's just, I think it's part of the issue for this team is that one, he's not very good defensively. So he's, he's got to keep scoring like the Sixers when you, especially when you pair him with Harden, it's, it gets a little bit tough. Uh, and he's, he's a little bit inconsistent and that doesn't mean I, I don't think highly of him. Don't think he's, he's due for a big contract because he deserves that, but it's just ever since they made him the starting point guard last year, when Ben Simmons just said, I'm not playing for this team. I've always thought, man, they're really asking a lot of this kid who was picked 21st in the draft and he just keeps exceeding their expectations. Uh, but he has to be that third guy, Marcus. Like they don't have somebody who's consistent. Like Tobias Harris can be a good, consistent role player. You know, he's, he's morphed more into the catch and shoot type of guy, but Tyrese Maxey's the guy with the upside. He's the guy that can get you 25 and get hot from three and be very tough to guard. So I, I would say he's probably that third guy. Today's show is brought to you by Run Your Pool. Visit play.runyourpool.com slash NBA show to win $1,000. Run Your Pool is the home of competition, bringing sports fans and their friends together to connect and compete. Run Your Pool has over 50 game types for every sport you can think of. It's a one-stop shop for sports gaming. With over 2 million players, there's no better place to run your bracket for your friends, family, or office. And with the madness coming, We've decided to team up with Run Your Pool to give you guys a chance to compete in a bracket challenge. It's super simple. You know how this works. You fill out your picks for all 68 teams in the tournament, and you get points for each pick you get right. Run Your Pool is giving away $1,000 for the top five finishers, and you get to compete against us to show how much you know ball. I almost forgot the best part. It's completely free to play. So head over to play.runyourpool.com slash NBA show and don't forget to get your picks in when the bracket is live March 12th. That's play.runyourpool.com slash NBA show to win $1,000. Sorry, it's my first time doing a podcast apparently. So um, <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that, Rich, because I mean, see, to me, I mean, maybe I'm missing something, but to me, it seems like Miami is a much worse matchup for Philly than Boston is because – I saw out of bio guarded Joel well <laughs> down the stretch, like with no help. Right. Yep. Like, and, and, they, and then to your point, they have nothing for Jimmy Butler. They don't have anything for Jimmy Butler. He's so to me, still. the heat is the team that if I were Philly, I would try to avoid at all costs in a seven game series. Whereas with Boston, I get that they have had success against them, but I can't imagine. I mean, I can't imagine doc rivers wouldn't want, a matchup as good as Al Horford is smart as Al Horford is. He wouldn't want seven games of Al Horford trying to guard Joel and B like, I can't imagine he wouldn't want that. But am I, I mean, what am I missing there? No, I, I think you're, you are right. DA, and that the, the way I've kind of looked at these last two games, both one possession losses for the Sixers. I thought that Boston game was a good loss and that I thought they played well. And I thought, like you said, they showed some good things. And the big thing that they showed is that Horford has been Joel's kryptonite for his entire career. And not only was his, was he the kryptonite, you know, 2017, 2018 guarding him in Boston, making threes against him. He, he even guarded him better when he was the power forward on the Sixers. For he was a kryptonite like, as a teammate. Yeah. Yeah, that was Embiid's <laughs> worst year. The Sixers were horrible that year. <laughs> it was like a spacing catastrophe. It was like, you know, they had nobody who could shoot that year. And uh, yeah, he he can still do the the three point shooting thing, but I agree with you in that I watched that game and said he's got nothing for Joel. Joel shot what was the number 18, 20, 20 free throws, something yeah. on that number. I mean, I and, think that's a problem. <laughs> like, I don't I, in the playoffs, especially you know. And I know people say the playoffs, the whistle gets a little tighter. I don't know, man. Like they were they were hammering him at the end of that game. They really didn't have a lot for him. And Joel got better at double teams over the past few years. Like he, he reads those better. Yeah. There, there might be the occasional time where, you know, Jason Tatum or Marcus smart flying at him would, uh, would cause him a little trouble, but he's a lot better at that. Now. I think he only had two or three turnovers the other night. If, if he's doing that against Boston, 
while scoring 40 plus points. It's, it's a problem. And, and I, I agree with you in that it's a tough matchup for the Sixers, but they don't really have that answer. Robert Williams has never been able to guard him either. He's not the answer. He's just not big enough. There's like, I always say this thing with Joel, like it's like a, an amusement park roller coaster ride. You must be this big to ride or whatever. And Robert Williams, he just doesn't have the heft. Like he's an, he's an awesome player. So that was a good loss. The Miami one was bad though. It's like you said, their, their late game execution stunk. Joel didn't get good shots against Bam. Bam is tough too because you can switch on to Harden and yeah, no, I, I mean, think Bam is... defensively is a is a low. Now he's a problem defensively, you know, and that like you and 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 I don't mean I'm not being denigrating Miami. They foul every play and they just don't call it because you can't. And it's what it's like the Knicks. They foul every play and that's that's what they do. And 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 the refs won't call it, so you get frustrated. I understand that, but. But they do guard you like they you don't get easy stuff against them. And I just boy, I looked at that one. That, <laughs> that's not going to work for Philly. <laughs> it's very well could be a first round series, though, if the Knicks yeah. keep winning this game. That could be the three six very easily. So, uh, yeah, it's tough. And I mean, Eric Spolster has had a lot of success against the Sixers over his career. Uh, that would be a big Doc River series where he would be under the microscope for sure. Uh yeah, that, that would definitely be a hard one, man. Like, I think hopefully they would just get enough stops to to get out of that series. But I, I'm sure amongst these teams, the Knicks, the Nets, you know, all of these teams, maybe the Hawks that could match up with them in the first round. I, I think the Heat would probably be their last choice. They don't, they don't want to see that um, just because of that game. It's, it's going to be slow, half court, and it's, you know, it, even if they get by it, I don't think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, that that that's one of the issues with Philly. Who, low key, I desperately want to see winning championship just so I can see Iverson crying in the, <laughs> in the, in the, But to me, one of their issues, especially comes playoffs, is you know how how it is. You, it's guards, man. You got to have a a playmaking guard. Philly's problem is they don't have nobody who can guard those guys. No, uh, or at least no, if you're don't. running Harden and Maxi. So my question is, I'm curious. Uh, Anthony Melton, I've seen him give Stephen Curry problems when he was with Memphis. What what do you see as his role in a playoff series, especially if you're dealing with somebody like uh, uh you know, the Knicks guard you were just talking about, uh Jalen like Brunson, Jaylen Brunson. Uh, or yeah. if you're dealing with you gotta deal with, you know, uh, Jimmy Butler. Can, can do you see him them running three guard or do you they just live with whatever Maxie and Harden can do? Well, they're not starting Maxi right now, which has been interesting. Over the past month, you know, I think they they would acknowledge that Maxi is their third most important player, maybe fourth. You know, if Tobias is playing well, whatever. He's he's certainly a starting level player for this team, uh, but they're not starting him because they put Melton in the starting lineup. I think as an acknowledgement, like man, we're so small in the backcourt and not very good defensively with Harden and Maxi. That's a little bit of an issue because at some point you have to play those two guys together. But that is what they've done, and Melton has been a good pickup for them. I mean, they traded him for very little. They traded him for Danny Green, who was hurt this year, who was very good soldier for them, but they knew like he tore his ACL at that point. So, and then it was like the 25th pick. He's been very good. And he's, I, I don't know if he's quite the defensive stopper though, Marcus, like he, he can give Steph Curry problems. He's certainly like, he's very handsy player, athletic rebound, steals blocks, all of those things. I'm not sure he's like the one-on-one stopper though. I kind of have seen him enough against Boston where it's like, eh, Malcolm Brogdon's getting by him pretty easily. And that's like a little bit of an issue, but you know, for a team that around Harden and around MB desperately needs guys that can hang on both ends of the court, he's going to be a big deal. You know, he's been a 40% three point shooter for them this year. That's also low key, very important. Uh, so he's going to be one of those guys. Like it's going to be him and PJ Tucker are going to be kind of the three and D defense guys, PJ for bigger wings melt for the guards. And I would agree with you, Marcus, like the, they don't have anybody who can guard those guards. And that to me for a pretty complete team, they, they, they fairly deep, pretty good balance with three point shooting Joel inside hard and outside their perimeter defense is my biggest issue with them in the playoffs. And it's something they're going to have to work around. Not every team that wins a championship is perfect, but that's certainly the thing they're going to have to work around if they're going to, you know, go deep in the playoffs or something like that. Well, I was uh, rich. I was surprised by their relative, you know, lack of activity at the trade deadline. That's what, or even now we're, we're removed from the trade deadline, the buyout, you know, deadline or the buyout window. Um, I thought a wing 
defensive wing would have made a lot of sense. And I think there were, there were some guys out there that, that were available. I mean, you know, Malik Beasley. Or Come on, like you that. know, you wanted a Pat Bev on the, you know, yeah, six, even you know, Pat you Bev, Pat you know? Bev. and I just wondered, were you surprised they were not as maybe active as you would think a contending team would be? I, I wasn't too surprised DA. And I guess the, the thing was just, you know, covering them the entire year. They they signaled with their offseason and the hard cap that they encountered when they tampered to sign PJ Tucker and Daniel House. Uh, what? No, never. Second. They'd never be. They could never have tampered. No, it's against the rules. So they were they were limited in assets already. And then they got docked two more second round picks for Tucker and House. So right, they right. really just they didn't have a ton of maneuverability to uh to make a big trade and they just didn't have a lot of stuff they've you know they've quietly traded it, it's so funny when they started the the process and when i guess colangelo took over from hinky they had more pick they were like oklahoma city is now you know they they just had all of the picks all of the the young players all, all of these things that you could swing for star level trades now they've screwed it up a million times so they don't have those anymore and quietly because they've made so many bad moves over recent years, they've traded like all their first round picks, getting Al Horford out of here, right. getting Ben Simmons for James Harden. Good, by the way, good trade, but it did cost them a couple of second round picks. So there was a lot less they could, you know, kind of do. They traded Danny Green last year. It was kind of their their matching salary trade chip. And, you know, they went in on this guy, J uh, Jalen McDaniels, which I thought was interesting because he was, it, it was pretty clear to me that, one, he has talent. Like, I think a lot of people were wondering why Charlotte gave up on him. But I was just wondering for the Sixers, this guy has not played real basketball in his entire career. Like, he's played for a team that's been in the lottery. They a bad just, team. Yeah. They don't yeah. real basketball, David. <laughs> <laughs> they, don't, they just don't play defense in, in Charlotte, man. They don't do anything. And I know they're, you know, Steve Clifford, they're, they're trying or whatever. But it just... They've been a bad team and to throw him into a situation where it's just so much pressure and the Sixers need him to play, you know, 10, 15 of just solid minutes where he doesn't make a mistake. Maybe he can do it. It's been kind of up and down the start, but that's what they settled on. And, you know, I, I think they would just argue DA that the Tucker signings and, and the house and Melton uh, acquisitions, that was their trade deadline this year. So. What, what was the deal with, uh, the, the Kevin Love buyout situation. I know he obviously clearly had his eye on Miami, and then he's like, "Yeah, man, I'm gonna stop in Philly." But just when I was looking into it, I don't know if it was a bunch of Georges and Yang family members, but there was a lot of people like, "Yeah, we don't need him. We got <laughs> what? What was that even about? And what, did they really have interest in, in Kevin Love? I think they had interest in him, but I, I think ultimately Marcus Miami had more money and they had more playing time. More time. For. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he started in last night's game and I, right. I, I'm not going to kill the Sixers for that. Like, I, I don't know how much Kevin Love has left in the tank. I mean, he, he can, he can still make some shots, still a very good rebounder through just a classic Kevin Love outlet pass last night. Just beautiful to watch the Tyler hero. Um, but like they offered him basically a starting role. And the Sixers don't have that for him. You know, he could have yeah. maybe competed for some backup center minutes, which are key here. I don't know how many stops they would have gotten with Kevin Love as the as the backup center. But yeah, there was definitely some interest there. They had already signed Dwayne Dedman, who we'll see. It feels like a, a lottery ticket in some senses to me. Um, but yeah, definitely some interest. But I just think Miami ultimately was a better fit for him. He just more more money, more more playing time. Yeah, I was wondering why, why he even stopped through. Like it was pretty <laughs> obvious to me. <laughs> All due respect. You uh, speaking of backup center, and they they had experimented with PJ at the backup five. Is that experiment dead, or are they are they going? Is that their playoff? Is that their playoff uh, center? Back. It's so center. funny. It's so funny, Da, because Doc will will like we'll ask him about it. Be like, hey, you played PJ last game as the backup center. Like, is that something you're going to do more? He's like, nah, we can't we can't do it too much in the regular season. Like, it, it taxes them. And then last night he was the backup center. He was. Like, I think that's a playoff. I think that's the playoff move. He just doesn't want to show it. Yeah, he doesn't want to show it. They they did do it earlier in the year out of necessity, where he played backup center and it was okay. They, they scored a bunch of points. They didn't really get a ton of stops, but again, that was October, you know, Sixers were kind of sleepwalking through those months. I'm not going to put too much stock into that. I, right. I definitely think that's going to be the playoff move, you know, um, 
Maybe there's a matchup where they need Deadman, where a team is just gigantic and is killing them on the court. If they or, somehow play Cleveland or somebody like that, some something like that. Yeah. But I think against most teams and against most of the small ball teams, like a team like Miami that could trend a little smaller, a team like Boston that'll trend smaller. PJ's the option, and uh, you know I, I think they they have some interesting pieces there. Like they can sort of play the Harden Houston. We're gonna switch everything one to five style spread the court out for him. And that's been, I, I guess the the good news for the Sixers this year with the backup center, which is always the issue here. Like they just, they never have figured that out. Um, is that Harden has been really good in those minutes this year. Harden has been basically the first guy who's proven capable of, I can carry the team in those minutes. Yeah. The backup center matters, but the best player on the court besides Embiid matters right. as well. And he's looked, you know, he hasn't looked like Houston Harden because that guy was one of the most insane scorers in the history of the league. But he showed some really good stuff. He's actually getting by people pretty consistently in isolation. So I've been pretty encouraged with how Harden has looked. And DA, yeah, I agree with you. Like I think the the final answer is PJ backup center, bunch of wings that you can switch and do stuff. And Harden's got to carry him for those eight ten minutes a game. Today's show was brought to you by our friends at ExpressVPN. Visit expressvpn.com/ding for more information. You guys have heard me discuss the importance of having a VPN to protect your online privacy before. But choosing a VPN you trust is just as important. Now, I like to research our sponsors, and I like to only recommend brands that I believe in. And I can tell you ExpressVPN is the best VPN on the market. Number one, they don't log your activity. Lots of other VPN services make money by selling your data to advertisers. ExpressVPN does not do this. Number two, ExpressVPN is fast. ExpressVPN uses Lightway, a new VPN protocol that they engineered to make user speeds faster than ever. The last thing you need to know about ExpressVPN is that it's easy to use. There are no technical skills required to get set up. You just launch the app, and in one click, you're covered. So protect yourself with VPN that I use and trust. Use our link, expressvpn.com slash ding today, and get an extra three months free on a one-year package. That's expressvpn.com slash ding. Visit expressvpn.com slash ding to learn more. I guess I forgot to hide a podcast too. All I'm saying is since February 1st, James Harden has the second best defensive rating on the team. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> He's dude, trying harder. I mean, yeah. the, dude, the, dude, the dude is playing like at a level I didn't think he could get to. Uh, one other bit of like a uh, roster drama I wanted to ask you about. I mean, Matisse. Still on the team? Uh, capable body? Is that your perimeter defensive? No, answer? he's in Portland. <laughs> and they get rid of him? That's it. He's perimeter defending for the Blazers now. Yes, he is. <laughs> so, that, better question there. Why couldn't – why didn't he work? Because he's clearly a good perimeter defender. Is it just a matter of unable to do anything offensively? Uh Yep. Was it That's like it. an attitude issue? It just but 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 in the playoffs, you just need somebody to guard somebody. Like why you can't have one way players defensive side. So they Marcus, they they grappled with that and first it definitely wasn't an attitude problem. Everybody loves Matisse. He's a great, great dude. Certainly like a like just like an interesting thinker. He's got all these crazy good interests and just just like a good person too, I would say. Uh the issue was they didn't trust his offense. And it was funny this year that after they didn't trade him in the offseason, which they were thinking about doing, um, he played okay in spot minutes this year. Like you mentioned, like defensive rating, the Sixers defensive rating when Batiste was on the court this year was pretty darn good. But after last year, there was a moment, I'll never forget this. It was game six against the Heat. It was the game the Sixers ended up losing um, where Jimmy Butler ice cold, you know, kills him. Does the Tobias Harris over me thing afterwards, all, all of those things. Danny green got, he tore his ACL in the first half of that game. So Sixers basically have no depth. They have to start somebody along their other four players. And they pick Matisse to start the second half. It's like four possessions. Matisse misses two shots. They don't guard him at all. And doc takes him out of the game and he doesn't come back for the rest of the game. And this is when they had no depth. And I think that kind of informed them moving forward. They just, with Joel specifically as their center, they did not trust Matisse's offense at all. I'm not saying that's right, but that is just how they uh, they viewed it. And I think when they look at one-way players, 
they trended towards having more one-way players that are offensive players, hoping that Joel can kind of yeah, make shake. up for the defense. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, what happened to Shake? <laughs> what what happened to him? Like, why is he was the one that got it looked like he got squeezed minutes wise. Um I like I like Shake. Yeah, I do I mean, too. He's... That's what I'm saying. Like, what happened? Why is you know it 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 doesn't seem like he's in their play. I mean, I you know, I don't know yet. He's gonna play a ton over this next month. They have a billion games, and Doc yeah. said we're gonna open this rotation up. Like they're definitely gonna load manage some of these games for sure. And I, I don't even think you can blame them. You know, they're playing I think they got a back to back. I think they're playing Golden State and Phoenix on a back to back. Like it's just they, these East Coast teams don't understand the West Coast back to back life. No, where, uh, where, where they got these crazy travel uh, schedule. The uh, Shake's going to play a little bit more, but yeah, I don't think he's part of the the playoff rotation. Which is he's just had a very funny career here because whenever Harden sits, whenever Maxi sits, like and they need somebody to ramp up their offensive usage. Shake is good. Like Shake will give you 15 points a game and it'll be efficient. He can shoot. Um, but for whatever reason, I think because I think he's just on the wrong team almost. Like they have Harden and Maxi, who, as far as guards are concerned, are pretty two, you know, high usage players. They're yeah, gonna have the ball in their hands. Right, he's redundant right. with them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. And so I, I do think, you know, he's a free agent this offseason. I think the Sixers who are gonna be limited and what they can give unrestricted free agents. Like I think they should be looking to bring him back. But I also think he's somebody who, if there's a team that's like you know, coming up and just needs a third guard. Like I yeah. think he's a pretty good player, man. I, I, you know, if if you're not trying to win a championship right now and you just need somebody to kind of just help you. <laughs> right, move, right. Maybe move Charlotte, the... maybe Charlotte. Right. Oh my <laughs> God. Yeah. He'd be great. Char- Charlotte. Charlotte's yeah. all, Charlotte's all in on Vic now. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, what's the name? LaMelo's out for the year now. So yeah, that's this. Yeah. yeah I'm, all... I'm going up to Matisse tonight and be like, dude, what are you doing here? I was just looking at stats and you were, <laughs> He's literally in the bay right now. They're playing for <laughs> like, what are you I think doing that's here? a good fit for him, though. You know, it's funny. I was watching Dame score a billion points the other right, night, right, right. and Matisse is wide open because they're, <laughs> you know, they're they're really putting all their defensive attention on Dame, and that team also can't guard anybody on the perimeter. So it's it's a good fit for him. Right. If it's going to work, that's probably the right spot for him. So I I wanted to ask you now, you know, in the interim of this season for the 76ers the eagles have gone to the super bowl <laughs> the phillies have gone to the world series they didn't win I though know, i don't know the name of their soccer team but they made the mls cup <laughs> they made the final the union yep where 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 are the sixers in the firmament now of of philly sports are, are they i mean i know they were never first but are they like <laughs> fourth now where are they <laughs> Well, they're, they're never going to be first, as you know, Dia. The, the Eagles are going to be first until the end of time. Right. Uh, so it's it's funny. They've been second, I feel like, for a long time, just because the Phillies have been so bad. The Flyers stink. Uh, you know, Yeah, they, they've clearly been second because they've been a good team every year. Right. And so it's been a funny year for them in that they're a pretty good team. Like, they're 39 right. and 21. I know they lost the last couple of games, but they're having a pretty good year. It looks like they're going to win 50-plus games. Yeah, yeah. Some, something, something around yeah. there. Uh, certainly a, a good team. They've gone under the radar, though, because the Phillies made the World Series at the beginning of the year and October and the first week of November, people were just going crazy for Bryce Harper and and all these guys. And the Eagles were, were killing teams the entire year up until the second half of the Super Bowl. So they've gone under the radar, which I think has been a good thing overall. Yeah, it's probably, like just, it probably is, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. The Sixers have been a team that's gotten a ton of hype and a ton of, you know, national pub and stuff like that. And they, they really haven't delivered on it. It's just usually not good <laughs> over, over the years. Like, you know, it's like this team can be a problem. And I, I guess they, they could have been, but they, they never get past the second round. So, uh, so this was different. They just went under the radar and they were, were kind of about their business. Now I think it's starting to shift because, you know, they're good and the Eagles are done and, and we're starting to see it a little bit more, but yeah, it's been, it's been a funny year and that, you know, they, they were kind of sleepwalking through November and Harden got hurt and Maxie got hurt. And, you know, I think normally in Philadelphia over the past couple of years where it's been a little more dire, uh, as far as the, the overall landscape, people need one thing to latch on to when the six, if the Sixers weren't performing at the beginning of the year, that would have been the, the noise would have been louder. I would have said, uh, you know, people would have been complaining more. And this year it's been, you know, as far as drama is concerned, like maybe the Harden report on, on Christmas Day that you know right. he's, he's thinking about going to Houston. But as far as the Sixers are concerned, guys, like, man, I've seen a lot worse stuff than that. Like, <laughs> I mean, you know, 
It's, right. it's been a fairly normal basketball year for them, which has been, I think that's, that's good because it's different. It's not usually normal around. No here. Simmons drama. So I'm right. No. I mean, it just makes a huge difference, right? You know, you know what that means though, Rich? What does when it mean? When it hit, it's going to hit it. Oh, oh yeah. Man. When, it, when it does come, <laughs> it's going to come. No, the off it's season is going to be yeah. Marcus, if they lose in the first or the second <laughs> right. round, I am I am prepared for the avalanche yes. to no. It's a, it's a gun. So I, I completely agree second. with you on that. Or <laughs> Daryl gonna trade everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's if if they lose early, it's it's gonna look different. I don't know yeah. exactly how it's gonna look different, but it's it's gonna look yeah. different. All right, Rich, man. Appreciate you jumping in, man. This was great. Love to love deep diving on, on good teams um and their drama while while bad teams, you know, struggle to you know the teams that are tanking for for women, yeah, I might do what they do. But I like talking about good teams that try to win. So so you know, uh we will see you down the road, I'm sure, in the postseason. Appreciate it. Have a safe trip down to Miami. Tell Miles what up if you go to one twelve tonight. That's my man. And the rest that. of you, leave that five he star. He going. He going. He going. Of course he going. Uh, leave that five star review on Apple, Spotify, Google Play, wherever you get this fine American podcast. Marcus, my man. If they can't leave the five stars, what do they need to do? Keep it to yourself, you hater.